Welcome to the Intimate Marriage Podcast, where I teach educated, successful couples how to have incredible, passionate relationships so that you can stop compromising and start feeling fully alive in your relationship. I'm Alexandra Stockwell, aka The Intimacy Doctor. I'm a physician, a relationship and intimacy coach, and I'm an intimate marriage expert. My husband and I have been married for 26 years. We have four children and full professional lives, and we've created an amazing marriage. I've shown hundreds of couples how to do so as well. So if you want to deepen your understanding of your own relationship and learn to access new heights of emotional, sensual, and erotic intimacy, you're in the right place. I will show you how. Now, let's dive in. I'm really happy to have you here, Vince and Christina. Actually, I didn't ask how you say your last name. Is it Shiri Shiri? You got it right first the time. first time. Shiri. Shiri. Okay. That's a great name for the two of you. Shiny, Shiri. It's excellent. All right. We're going to get into your professional qualifications in a moment, but let me just say that the three of us have had quite a few outstanding conversations, but they've been where the two of you were interviewing me, and I'm really excited to be able to interview the two of you. And when I was getting ready, there was this really tender part of my heart that started talking to me. Because I remember when my father, the woman who was the second wife, when she moved in with her son, my bedroom was given to him. And I actually never slept over at my father's house again after that. I was in high school when, no, yeah, I was in high school when that happened. And like that that's how life unfolded and we're not going to go further into that that is water under the bridge for sure and i have wonderful feelings about her and him and the whole situation maybe that's exaggerating slightly but anyway close enough to being true and the thing <laughs> is that i think we can imagine some of the challenges that arise for the children in a blended family. And that's really the context. I don't actually want to talk about the challenges for the children per se, but for two fabulous, fit, energetic, like just each of you is such a good person. And I don't actually know that much about what your life experiences were before you got together, but I know that you have created a blended family, which is just the most beautiful model for blended families, for first time marriages, really for anyone at any stage of committed relationship who wants inspiration and juiciness to enhance their life. So that's my introduction. And what else would you like listeners to know about each of you and the two of you together? You're prettier. You go first. <laughs> well, you're handsomer. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much for that introduction. And I guess like just to give some background on our story is we both came from a, a horribly toxic relationships in the past. And so um, we met and got married and he had two kids. I had one kid. We blended them together and then had two kids together and then tried to make a bunch of a mess work together. And um, it, it was fun and fantastic and challenging and exciting and hard and all the things. Um, yeah, that it could be. And so I know there's people listening who have had to blend families and um, we're here to help and we're here to do whatever it is. Sorry, I'm very distracted. Oh. Apologies, we got technical someone coming in behind us. We have clothes <laughs> in the dryer. Okay, well, you know what? 
I really like that about the two of you and a child just walked by because you both have such high standards, great presence, and a whole heck of a lot going on at the same time. So there's something that is super authentic about the noise of the dryer and the kid walking by, and that's just how life is. And I haven't even mentioned that you're both entrepreneurs and, you know, hardworking creators and providing services. But anyway, what do you want to add, Vince? No, just to echo what she said, I mean, both coming from uh, troubled marriages to start, we both um, got married young for all of the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, we we're both teenagers when we initially got married, not to each other, but in our first marriage. And, um, you know, we learned some things the hard way, if you want to, we could say it that way. Uh, but you, you, oftentimes it's those really tough situations and really tough, like if you have a tough boss or a tough family member or a tough marriage you learn a lot in the tough times. Like you learn a lot about yourself and like, how do you persevere through something that's so difficult and how, how do you come out on the other side of that, like a better person? And I think those are a couple of the things that we've really worked through is becoming better people on the other side of some difficult situations. Um, and I think we've done that really well and then blending that together. And now I won't say this has been 13, 14 years of easy because I can tell you, and we'll probably get into this at the beginning, it was very difficult and your story resonated with me about you know you, you your dad gets remarried and this new person moves in and you never spend the night there again because this other person took your room and i'm sure some of those things happen with our kiddos as well i'm, I'm sure they did positive mm -hmm. um but we make the best of it we learn we've been on this personal development journey together for a long time thankfully she's you know she was like kind of ascending well beyond my personal development ish or whatever that looks like. And I'm like, I'm not getting left behind by this woman. I need to catch up and match the amazingness that she has. So uh, I would. So what you shared, I think you said it so eloquently, Vince, about how challenges really influence us and make possible learning growth and evolution beyond what would have happened if we didn't have the challenge. And that is certainly true when the challenges are with the person that we remain married to and then turn it into an incredible marriage. It's obviously also true when we get divorced and find new love with somebody else. And I think while there are certain things that we need to go through ourselves in order to really learn it, so it's not just intellectual learning, book learning, but that it really is embodied transformation, I also think it's kind of a foundational principle in the with the Intimate Marriage Podcast that when we're open, we can learn a great deal from other people's experiences, that there are things that can be taken up and made good use of without having to go through that suffering very personally. So with that in mind, I wanted to pause you, not, obviously, this is not a, like, a, a, it's not an invitation to rehash or whine about your ex-spouses. That's not where this question is going. And I know the two of you would never take it that way anyway. But will you just say like some of the challenges, just, just name them so that anyone listening can either recognize that or avoid that. I don't even mean in your prior marriages, unless you think that would be useful, but just like what, what were the challenges at the beginning that someone can have their antenna out and catch it earlier, let's just say. Uh, well, if we're talking with blended families, some of the challenges are the kids accepting your new love, your yeah. new spouse. I mean, I came in and, and our relationship happened very quickly. Um, we met in November and we're engaged by June, May. May, I don't know. I'm bad at dates. And then we're married by July. July. And so within a year, we had created a whirlwind for our kids yeah. and we were so caught up in ourselves and this newfound love and this excitement and the joy and the thrill that we didn't, necessarily not that we didn't realize that we had kids right but we didn't necessarily consider all the stuff that they would be going through yeah. 
when we met and were blending this whole brand new family when, you know, his kids were eight and 10 or nine and eight or something, you know, around that age. And they had a mom and a dad. And then here I come with me and my son and they're like, what is happening? She is not my mom. This is not my family. This is my house. My mom's gone. What? Like they, there was a lot of confusion and a lot of like, just dealing with this whole yeah. brand new experience. And then my son was very young. He was three. three and he was excited. He had this new guy in his life and new big brothers. And he had been an only child and now he has these big brothers. And so how do the older boys react with the little one who's excited and they're not? And so there was a lot of challenges. And then to add that, the communication between us, ha- we had to figure it out, you know, and then his family was used to the ex-wife and didn't yeah. necessarily want me involved in their life. <laughs> and then, you know, like there was just a lot that was happening in very short time. And we were in this cloud nine la la land while everybody else was experiencing this tornado. Like they did not know how to keep up with what was going on inside of us. And so a lot of them thought we were just pregnant and got knocked up. So we had to get married real quick. So (laughs) that wasn't the story. So yeah, there was a lot of challenges. What were some of the challenges on your Um, end? Challenge wise, I would say like as a, as a dad, it was, it was accepting um, her son. Like when I say accepting, I mean like I'm, you know, I had my two boys, they were, a lot like I was as far as like athletic and sports and movies and all the same things that I did. And then Nathan was a lot different than I was. So that was a challenge for me. And that that, that's obviously that's maturity on my part back then I was in my twenties, but like he didn't like anything that I liked. And I know it sounds kind of foolish now saying that, but that was a challenge for me. That's something that I dealt with. And then one of the biggest things is really, really what we really keyed on is never. And I, if I could, capitalize never and all bold and highlighted talking about the other spouse, yeah. the ex spouse. Mm-hmm. Like if you can avoid that now, even when it's happening on the other side, like we for sure were talking about by the other spouse, but we were never going to join in that or go down to that level. And maybe there's a time when maybe I did and, you know, lost my cool and said something I shouldn't have, that, that could have happened. I'm not saying it didn't, um, but we really made an effort to keep our, you know, what we spoke in front of the other kids really as a positive thing about the other parent, because we wanted to be, to come across that way. So I think that would be challenges is definitely like, watch what you say about the, about the ex-spouse and really like as a guy, like accepting the other child in, that was something that I I struggled with. Yeah. You know, there is a universal challenge with that, which is greatly intensified when blending a family. And that is how much you prioritize the children versus how much you prioritize one another. And I think that pretty much all of the unconscious memes in society are unhelpful in that regard. Because in a really great marriage with children, it's not as either or as our conversation might imply. But I do yeah. wonder, how did you navigate, like, what did you say to yourself and one another about really prioritizing the marriage in the way that you knew needed to happen while also prioritizing the bond with your children, which is inherently a forever bond without any negotiation about it? Right. For me, I'll speak and then you can go if you yeah. like. It was it had to do with non-negotiables for us. From the very beginning, we had these non-negotiable weekly dates that Christine and I would take together. So conveniently, uh, in the beginning, we were able to travel about an hour to let Nathan go with his dad. And then my kids would go with their mom. So we had a free weekend every other weekend where we had the whole house to ourselves, like almost like newlyweds in a way without mm-hmm. the kids. So it was really, really great that we had that. Um, and in addition to that, we, you know, weekly we were going out on dates and that was not negotiable. Like it's going to happen, even if it was in the house or going for a walk or something where we had time together. And in addition to that, I would go pick up my kids from school. 
and take them to lunch. So we'd go to Taco Bell or McDonald's and I would spend that one-on-one time with each of them, you know, just to have that continued love that we had. And we would do things together, of course, as a family, but that one-on-one time was really important when they were young, especially at the beginning of what we were doing, just so they felt like, you know, dad still loves me, even though, you know, clearly I did and all that, they understand that now, but, you know, at the time it could have felt like, man, he only cares about is her. Like they're going on dates and they're all, you know, they're going on quarterly weekends away in Cincinnati or wherever we went, we would quarterly, we'd go to an overnight as well. Like those were things that just were not negotiable. Um, and we worked through that and it, but, but the one-on-one time with the kids was important too. Like as a dad, especially take your kids out one-on-one, even if it's, again, if it's 15 minutes of just, you're sitting there, the phone's down quality conversation back and forth, you're eating food, you're joking around, playing basketball outside, whatever that looks like for you. It doesn't have to cost money, but spend that quality one-on-one time with the kids individually and as a group too as well. But that was super important that we prioritize each other. And then it, of course, that one-on-one time with the kids was a big deal as well. Yeah, I agree with everything he said. I have nothing to add <laughs> other than it is a big deal for kids. I remember yeah. a conversation with Camden and he's like, dad, who do you love more, Christina or me? And that's a real thing that comes up for kids, right? And in my immaturity, that like brought up so much stuff inside of me at the time because I was like, oh my God, how do you answer this question? You love me, don't you? And what do you even want the answer to be? There's a problem either way. Right. And so now that I'm older and I've gotten so much coaching and we've done so much coaching and my kids ask that same question, right? So kids just want to know whether you're blended or you're not. My daughter wants to know, daddy, who do you love more, mommy or me, right? And so now in our maturity and understanding that love, love is love. Like I love you and it's different for every person. And there's the amount is the same. There's no more or less. The amount is the same. However, it's different. And I explained to her, like, she's got all these pets, right? She's got bunnies and she's got cats and she's got a dog and we've got chickens and we've got all these animals on our little homestead here. And I'm like, how can you pick between your bunnies? Which one do you love more? Which one would you give away? And she can't. She's like, I can't. I would never give away any of them. I love them all. I'm like, exactly. But they're different. And they have different personalities and they have different things that they do and they're funny and they're sweet and they're, you know, they're all different, but you love them all the same. And so I wish that I had that answer for Camden when he was younger and say like, it is the same. There is no measure. It is all the same measure. It's the same. However, we love each other in a different way. And how I love your, you know, how I love you is different than how I love Christina. And you know what I mean? Like that's, that's the answer for anybody who's dealing with that. That's the right answer. <laughs> right. It's a, it's a kind of bypassing the hierarchy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. that's wonderful. And I want to, so you've been together 15 years now, more or less. Is that right? Around 14. 14. Around 14. Okay. Sure. So kind of maybe part and parcel, maybe independent of being a blended family. You've had all this evolution in your marriage as well. And really the thing that I'm after with this is there's a certain way that the two of you, and I'm going to particularly say you, Vince, talk about sex and intimacy and affection and the way in which you two learned to let go of shame. I I don't want to put words in your mouth. You adjust them afterwards if I don't get it right. But there's a way, even the way you interview me about sex, there's like an an unspoken understanding that the two of you have accessed something, like a way of being one with one another that is genuinely nourishing for each of you. You're very different people from one another, but you found a way to really be with one another that is nourishing and exciting and inspiring. And we don't even really have the words in English to articulate the question, but I'm sure the two of you can feel it. And however you respond would really be very valuable. Yeah, totally. So the biggest thing uh, in regards to the topic of sex within our marriage definitely would be my letting go of expectations. 
as a husband, I had these really, really tough expectations or these things were like, I, I'm like, I'm going to work and I'm doing my part and I'm listening and we're having conversations. So I should get what I want at the end of the night. Like it was an expectation that I had. And there were many of nights uh, for a long time, for years, in fact, where, you know, for we're snuggling up, we're getting ready to go to bed and, you know, things aren't going to happen, you know, it would be like, and then a, and then a rollover. And she knew. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it was, she knew like how I was feeling and guys, if you're watching this, that that's just, that's just not the way I, I've been there. Like letting go of the expectations has exponentially improved our marriage beyond anything that I can even really fully comprehend or say, like you said, with English words. The other thing that I would add How do that, you let go of expectations? Like that's easy to say, but what did, yeah. did you just have a conversation with yourself? Yeah, honestly, there, there's going to come a point, like some boiling point where it's just not working. Like whatever, it, maybe it's finances or maybe it's some other topic, but it just wasn't working in my brain. Whatever I was doing just wasn't winning. So I had to just make a decision and decide. And, and honestly, um, I had to kind of fake it till I made it for a little bit. Like she could tell like I was kind of walking out this path of saying some things that I was saying them to say, but I was trying to get myself like, okay, like, there's no expectations. Like I'm going to rub your back. And then if nothing happens, that's totally fine. And I'm just kind of saying that, but I wasn't feeling it. And she could feel that too. Like, so you, you know, but after a course of time, like, and I don't know if it was weeks or months, she could answer that better than I could, but it, it finally something clicked and it was like the expectations kind of evaporated and we've had, it's been the best it's been in years. Our whole marriage, like these last few months have been the best we've had as far as our sex life. Like, I, I can't say that enough. Like it's, it's just improved the expectation was there, like middle of the day, like we find ourselves up in the, in the bedroom and I'm like, how did this happen? Like this wouldn't have happened two years ago because it just wouldn't have. But now like it just happened. Like I, we didn't plan it. It wasn't expected. It's like, and it was amazing. You know what I mean? But I think it comes down to the letting go of the expectations. And you hit on another point is like, I have this, unique ability when I think about and I and I look at Christina, um, I look at her not only as my wife, but as like the child of our creator. Like first and foremost, she's God's daughter is what I would say. And like it's a big deal to me. And I believe that there'll come a time when I'll give an account for this relationship. And I want to give it a good account to it. And I want to be like, well done. That was you really, really were a good husband. And that's not the goal isn't to hear that well I mean it is to hear well done, you know what I mean? But it's like man, I really want to do good by Christina. She's a great woman. We've blended this family. She really, she was really the glue at the beginning more so than I was as far as like being more mature than I was. And she's just an amazing partner. Like we're totally different, but we celebrate. We've learned to celebrate those differences in each other, which is great. Like it's not like, oh, she doesn't do this the way I do. Well, that's great because I can lean on her for this because I suck at it and vice versa. Like if you can put your mind around like really celebrate celebrating the differences in each other. Um, I think that could really be beneficial in holding space for your spouse. Like when she's having her emotional, you know, I don't get super emotional. She does just not taking it personal and I just do holding not space. Get yeah. Super emotional. Right, no. <laughs> I am <laughs> crazy. Actually. Yeah. I know I said a lot there. So <laughs> there yeah, but I think too. it's, it's super potent, super helpful. I'd love to hear Christina. What is your womanly personal experience that has unfolded in parallel with what Vince has described for him? Oh, gosh. I mean, I feel like it's just taken a while for us to to discover this piece, right? Like, when it when he was having such heavy expectations on me, and it, it went both ways, right? Like, I had expectations on him to perform in different ways of, you know, Mm -hmm. Oh, take out the trash. That's the guy's duty. Or you better, you know, support our family or, you know, like there's different expectations that husbands and wives have for each other. And so it just unfolded in different ways, but it creates a lot of pressure. And there are certain personalities in life that deal very well with pressure. And then there's personalities that do not deal well with a lot of pressure. And I'm one of those who if I feel a lot of pressure, I shut down and I want to go run and hide. 
And so when I was experiencing those expectations, it felt so heavy. I could not, I could not do anything. And it's not that I didn't want to want to. Yeah. It's, I, and I would tell him that I'm like, it's not because I don't like you. It's not right. because I don't want to want to. I want to want to, <laughs> but I just don't. I yeah. don't want to. And I feel like the expectation is just like putting so much pressure on me. I don't, I feel like I'm being used. I feel like I'm being like mistreated. I feel like I would communicate all these things with him yeah. and he handled it pretty well. Like, towards the end when we started shifting, but he like did not get it at first. And ladies, I just want to tell you like persevere and stay committed to yourself and to your marriage and what you desire. And the end goal was always for us to have a great marriage. The end goal is always for us to be connected and and have incredible intimacy, both inside and outside of the bedroom. And so when that's the vision and it's not, it has to be my way, then like you do create something amazing and beautiful. And so when we both release those expectations yeah. and we both like allowed each other space to communicate about what was going on inside of our heart and our soul. I mean, our souls are involved in marriage. It is not just a surface thing. There is right. so much that goes on and it goes so deep and people are impacted at such a, a depth that you don't understand until you're fighting and you don't understand why you're fighting and you're screaming at each other and you're crying and you're hiding in a closet because you don't understand what's going on inside of you. You just think it's his fault. You know what I mean? Like, it's just your fault. I don't know what's going on, but you're making me mad. (laughs) Your soul is involved and impacted. And there, this is why we do what we do. And this is why you do what you do is because that depth, of understanding yeah. creates such a, a more beautiful, open relationship where you learn to communicate, you learn to connect, you yeah. learn, why are you angry? Why are you upset? Why do you have expectations? Why do yeah. I have expectations? All of those things, they matter so much in creating the relationship that you really want. That's good. That was so well put and a perfect lead into the question that I like to ask all my guests. But before I do that, I really just want to respond to one thing you said earlier, which is that, yes, some personalities thrive on pressure, like people who procrastinate, but then get it done by a deadline. That is someone who thrives on pressure. Anyone that you would ever want to be a trauma surgeon, you want them to be someone who thrives under pressure. It's a life and death intense situation. You want that to inspire their best work. So there are all kinds of personalities we're thriving on pressure, or all kinds of contexts, I'll say, where thriving on pressure is really appropriate. But our actual physiology, the way that our hearts and minds and genitals and all of our bodies function, sensual pleasure, sexuality is incompatible with pressure. There are a lot of things we could say about it, but at its most basic core, if we feel pressure, it means that in some way, it's like our evolutionary tendency to not feel safe is what is represented in the hormones moving through our body. And they just cannot coexist with the relaxation, the parasympathetic nervous system influencing. Like, honestly, we just need to be able to be present in a way, I don't mean just, that's not all there is to it, but we do need to be able to be present in a way that's just incompatible with pressure. So I really love how you frame that so well. And it gives a context for why letting go of expectations is so powerful. It would be very easy at a superficial level to think, oh, I just have to compromise. I can't count on anything. I have to let go of expectations. No, that's not what this is about. The two of you are such gorgeous examples of how letting go of a fixed idea and expectations really functions as an invitation for dropping the pressure, having the cortisol drop and disappear in terms of its influence and letting the hormones and the mindset and the lubrication of relaxation and responsiveness emerge 
And the expectations really block that when a woman can perceive it as she pretty much always will, whether it's conscious or not. So I just love what the two of you have shared and wanted to frame it that way as well. Anything you want to say before I go on to my next question? Yeah, that's so good. And I have to say, like, I did a lot of like, I don't know if your listeners know about tapping, but I do EFT tapping. I did a lot of that to calm myself down because anytime he would touch me, I would be like, there it is. Like, he wants something for me. Like, it literally put me in a panic mode and I had to relax my body. And and he was like, what the heck is wrong? wrong with her like it seemed like there was something wrong with me and there was so like something that I do often like ladies or gentlemen because I know that you know both can have her you know uh pressure put on you in that area do some tapping it's your job to be relaxed it wasn't his job to relax me although he did have to create a safe space for me it was my job to do the work to become relaxed and to become safe in my own body and to get rid of what I memorized my body to be so tense. Like I literally, all he had to do was come touch me and it was automatic. So my body memorized this, this reaction of fear and pressure and I had to unlearn it myself. So there's some techniques and tips of like, look up tapping. It's fantastic. It helped me so much. And there's some other ways to um, just relax your nervous system. And I'm sure you do some of that work as well. Yeah. Um, I'm not partial to one method or another, so long as you feel safe and relaxed and able to open to pleasure. And I just love how you've emphasized that, yes, it's your responsibility to relax but it's you, Vince, your responsibility to let go of expectations so there's so that it's safe to because as soon yeah, I just it's wonderful totally. how the two of you spoke about that. And all of this really provides a context for the question that I was gonna go into earlier, which is something I ask all guests on my podcast, the Intimate Marriage Podcast, because I absolutely believe that intimate relationship is the ultimate vehicle for personal growth. So I'd love to ask you, maybe I'll start with you, Vince. What have you learned about yourself as a result of being married to Christina? I think I've learned that I can, I've learned to, and what I've figured out is that I can let go of expectations. And this took me a long time. I know we've spoken about this, but I had these just wrong expectations. There's no other way to put it. They were just wrong. And through our just continued, really through her continual, like helping me almost like telling me how she's feeling and me being really what I've, it'll come down to this. I'm going to go in a different direction here is I've learned that vulnerability is key. I would say that would probably be the biggest thing now that I'm talking out loud and kind of processing out loud is vulnerability. Like prior to me being vulnerable in this marriage, it was more surfacey than anything. Like we went through the motions and it was good. Like our marriage was good. Like that's the thing. Like I'm, I know there's someone listening or watching this. Like your marriage is good, no doubt. But do you want to go to this next level? Great. Something that kind of blows your mind. And I had a big part in that to play. And a lot of it had to do with becoming vulnerable and, and sharing things that maybe I thought, God, if I share this, if she's going to think I'm weird or strange or not love me anymore. And when I shared the vulnerability, that kind of took us down this road, not kind of, it took us down this road of, of an intimacy that was beyond anything that I've experienced previous, um, ever before. So I would say learning vulnerability, learning to be open, um, learning to be like, brutally honest like i was one of those like i'll tell like i'm not going to tell a lie but i'll just say this and it's like kind of a partial truth which is really a lie right but i would like kind of partially say some things that i've just learned through her through her help as well it's like i get to be really brutally honest and get to be vulnerable and those would be probably the two biggest things that i've taken away from this marriage is extreme vulnerability extreme honesty um 
and that's made all the difference for us these last 13, 14 years. I hope that answers your question. It certainly does, Vince. It certainly does. I'd love to ask you, Christina, what have you learned about yourself as a result of being married to Vince? Uh, I, this is where I get emotional, right? <laughs> I'm a crier, so please forgive me. You're going to deal with my tears today. This man has just taught me unconditional love. And uh, no matter how wacky I get <laughs> or how crazy I've gotten in the past, um, he's shown me that I'm worthy of being loved um, in, in everything that I am and all that I am. And no matter what body size or shape or no matter what personality style I decide to put on for that day, um, I've, I've learned about myself just so many things. Um, because of our relationship, I've really learned how to to love and honor myself. And that's huge. I felt like I never have had that support before in my past. And then marrying him and he, he's been so steady and stable and just an incredible human to do life with. Um, I've had the safety to kind of explore who I am and explore what I want out of life and explore um, my passions and desires for life. And that's what's led us here is his stability and safety for us has created such a beautiful, like, duo where he's steady and I'm like, let's do this podcast. Let's create a marriage course. Let's go do coaching. Let's spend money on this thing. And like, we've just created such a, a really beautiful thing together. But yeah, I've learned about myself just, just a lot. I, I can't answer in just five minutes the things that I've learned about myself through marriage, because it really is like, in relationship, you have the most beautiful opportunity to look at yourself in a mirror and in a different light. And, and I get to see myself and, and the triggers that I have, the pain that I have, the fears that I have, the shame that I've held, all of those things I've learned to deal with and to heal because of our relationship, not in spite of it. And it's brought up all of those things. And it's beautiful because I've got to heal all of those things too. Well, that just sounds so good. And I'd love actually to just invite the two of you to share what you have going on. I know you both have lots of projects or entrepreneurs or coaches with a few different focuses. What would you like people to know about you and if they want to follow up with you after hearing this incredible conversation? Yeah, totally. Uh, social media wise, all the places, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And we'll have those Life, links so. in the show notes for sure. Uh, what's coming up next uh, for us, if you want something that's that's free of charge, would be our next marriage summit, which we like to run every other month. So Secrets to Happy Marriage is going to run late March. There'll be links on any of those places. Our website, shirelife.com, will be a link where you can join our next marriage summit. Um, it's free of charge. Again, you can come through, listen to experts, expert speakers such as Alexandra teach and help marriages begin to thrive and move forward. Um, those would be our main things. Uh, we're always dabbling in different things. Like I, if you want to be in better shape physically, a fitness coach, I can help you there. If you want to learn how to trade money and do stocks or crypto or whatever, we can. I can help you there as well. I, I love teaching crypto trading, stocks, that sort of thing, fitness. And of course, marriage is, is at the forefront of what we're doing in 2023 for sure. Yeah, but I'm, I'm a coach and I've been coaching for years and I just really love to help women um, specifically and women in marriage, but women find God themselves and connect in relationship with others. And so, um, yeah, it's just a passion of mine that you get to be seen, you get to be loved, you get to be felt, you get to be held and you get to be healed. And so um, I get to hold space for people who are looking for that and love and honor you exactly where you are. and help call you forward into a more beautiful, empowering space that you were actually called and created to be. And you do a great job. She does a great, I know I'm completely biased, but I would like, 
I would man if you're watching this, like I would recommend your wife going to whatever she's doing. She just does a really good job of not only teaching like what she's learned and what we've been through, but also just like being a good connection point for your wife, like someone that really like that cares about their clients. And I know I would assume if you're in this industry, you do care about your clients, but I'm telling you, like I see the behind the scenes, she genuinely loves the clients that she works with and does a great job holding space for them and seeing results come as as an effect of that. So again, biased, but (laughs) I'm always open on Messenger, Facebook Messenger. So find me and just chat. Okay, that's so good. And I just want to clarify, did you say you do the marriage summit every two months? So if somebody doesn't catch one, they can catch the next one? Yep, for sure. Yeah. So January, March, May, July, we'll be doing every other month the marriage summit for 2023. Okay, magnificent. Thank you both so much for opening your heart, using your voices, and sharing your wealth of experience and wisdom. Thank you. Thanks for having us. It's an honor. We, I, I'll tell this we love you. before we go. Like I always <laughs> tell you, I told you the first time you're on our one of our first summits called "Let's Talk About Sex." Your interview was my favorite. I don't have other guys see it. It just was, and I'm open with that because it was just a fantastic talk. So, and of course, the last summit it was just as good. Um, I really love our conversations that we get to have with you. So, thank you for having us on in this capacity as well. It was very, it was a pleasure for us to be here. Well, for me too, because you learn a lot about someone by how they interview and the questions they ask. And so I've been so glad to be the recipient and have really been looking forward to interviewing the two of you. And I'm just so grateful for this opportunity. So thank you. We love you so much. Thank you. Ah, Here I go. I'll cry again for everybody. If you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to leave the Intimate Marriage Podcast a five-star rating and review. And if you want fun, effective instruction on how to create a lifelong, passionate marriage, the Aligned and Hot Marriage Program was created for you. This is my signature program, and it contains all the best practices I have developed. I've applied them in my own marriage with great success and seen how helpful they are for the hundreds of couples I have coached. The Align in Hot Marriage program will give you everything you need to transform your marriage, turn it on, and feel more connected than ever in just eight weeks. Go to alignedhotmarriage.com and get started today.